Hello, Algebra 2 students. Today's lesson covers Chapter 1.4, which is all about how to solve equations when you have more than one variable. The basic steps are very much like what we talked about previously when we only had one variable to deal with. Like before, you want to isolate the variable by un undoing PEMDAS. In this case, the first step, though, is you have to identify which is the variable that you want to isolate. Once you've done that, same two steps. Isolate it by undoing PEMDAS. So for example, let's look here. You've been asked, given this equation, to solve for y. You're simply going to rearrange this equation so that it becomes y equals. Well, like before, I'm going to undo PEMDAS. y has to ultimately be by itself but I'm going to peel layers away from y in the opposite order. So 7x, which had been added, really, to the negative 3y, is now going to be moved over and subtracted away. Now I've got 8 minus that 7x, so what I'm left with here is negative 3y equals 8 minus 7x. And what's left to do now is simply to divide by negative 3. Cancel those negative 3's out. And this is a perfectly satisfactory way of stating the answer y is equal to this expression here. But you might like to rearrange it if you're a fan of the slope-intercept method. Um, this is your slope, 7 thirds x, and this is your y-intercept. How did I get that? Well, I simply divided both of these top two pieces, these top two terms, by negative 3. 8 divided by negative 3 is negative 8 thirds. Negative 7x divided by negative 3 is positive 7 over 3x because those negatives end up canceling. Okay, let's put those skills to use with a formula that you've certainly seen before, the conversion formula for Fahrenheit to Celsius. Now, personally, I understand Fahrenheit much better than Celsius. If you give me a Celsius temperature, I would apply this formula to figure out what Fahrenheit is. Let's say it were the reverse. Let's say that I had grown up in a culture where Celsius was the norm. I would have to rearrange the formula to, to derive, let's say it was 72 degrees out right now in Fahrenheit. Is that good or bad? I don't know. So we've got to move things over in the opposite order of PEMDAS. I've got Fahrenheit minus 32, whatever this temperature is. In this case, I said it was 72, is equal to 9 fifths C. Now you can, if you want, from this point, divide by 9 fifths. I would encourage you instead to multiply by the reciprocal. Dividing by 9 fifths can be a pain, but if you multiply times 5 ninths, those are going to cancel, and I'm going to end up with 5 ninths times the expression I'd had a second before, Fahrenheit minus 32. Cleaning this up, that's my formula. Celsius equals this 5 ninths times Fahrenheit minus 32. Make sure, though, if you've done this yourself, that you realize I need to have those parens around this so that 5 ninths is being multiplied after I've done this subtraction work. Okay, here's your turn to apply the same technique. Two different formulas, well, I'm sorry, the same formula, two different ways. In one case, I'm asking you to rearrange it to solve for h, and in the second case, I'm asking you to rearrange it to solve for b2. So go ahead, hit the pause button, and when you come back, I'll show you the answers. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've done that. Here's the answer to the first one, h equals. Here's the answer to the second one, b2 equals. It would have been perfectly fine if, for the second one, you'd said instead b2 equals a over h divided by 2 minus b1. This is the s saying the same thing as this, just said slightly differently. If either or both of these is confusing to you at all, come in with any questions to class. Okay, there are actually four concepts I want to make sure that you have clear from chapter 1.4. This second one is the ability to decide when, is it, when does it make more sense to plug in first and when does it make more sense to rearrange first. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at a couple of examples here. Let's say that I was given this equation and I was told x equals 7. I would do something differently than if I'd been given a similar equation but I've been told, well, x 
might be six, it might be eight, it might be ten, it might be other things, and I'm going to have to try a number of different x values. If I'm only given one x value, it's just as easy to simply plug that in here. Let's see that. Plug that seven in here in place of x. But if I've, I'm given a number of different x values, I would suggest rearrange the equation first so that you've got it written um, in the mode where the variable that you want is isolated. So down here I've got now y equals 2 divided by x minus 5. And that's going to be a whole lot easier for me to just plug 6 in here and 8 in here and 10 in here. Whereas up here, notice, I had y times 7 plus 3, or in other words, y times 10 is equal to 5. And then I was able to move the 10 over and get y equals 5 over 10, or in other words, y equals 1 half. The second mode, it's a lot easier for me to work from here to put in the 6 and say, okay, y is equal to 2 divided by 6 minus 5 is 1, so it's 2 over 1 or 2. And then the second time, y is equal to 2 over 8 minus 5, or in other words, 2 over 3, and so on. The third um, topic to work on from this chapter is word problems. As I say here, it's particularly nice when the authors of a word problem actually state the formula for you in their paragraph. Then all you have to do is the rearranging work. Here's an example. This story about hot air balloons, question 23 here, gives me the formula. Solve the formula for the volume of a sphere. The volume of the sphere is right here, but rearrange it so I'm solving it for r to the third. Well, okay. I restate this formula over here, highlighting for myself the fact that I'm solving for r to the third. And then what do I do? Well, I'm going to have to move 4 thirds pi over to the other side. One way to do it is, as I've said here, 4 thirds pi is simply being multiplied times what I want, that r to the third. So I could move this whole thing over here and underneath and have a perfectly satisfactory answer. Some people, myself included, would clean this up um, and actually do this differently. I'd rather, personally, when I have a fraction that I'm dividing by, I'd rather multiply by the reciprocal. I said this before, back when we were talking about the Fahrenheit Celsius conversion. I'd rather have 3 over 4 times everything else that I had here. Notice I had the volume over pi. So I've got 3 fourths times volume divided by pi is equal to r to the third. And then from there, I can simply take the cube roots of both sides to figure out what r is another word problem. But in this case, they haven't given me the formula. I have to figure it out myself. I've rewritten the paragraph that was in um, example four of your textbook because we don't really need example three to, to understand example four. For a concert, your goal is to sell $25,000 in tickets. Okay, I've got to somehow set up a formula. Well, wait, there it is. My goal is to sell $25,000 in tickets. So I know that the equation I'm going to end up working with is going to have some information over here to the left is equal to $25,000. Everything that I put together in order to reach my goal has to end up at this point. So what is that? this material over here to the left? What's going to make the $25,000? Well, it's the price for per adult times how many adults come to the concert plus the price I charge per child times the number of children that come to the concert. Go ahead and um, pause the video here and read it yourself to make sure that you're clear how I came up with this. Okay, now it's a matter of putting numbers in place of these placeholders. Well, I know that the price per adult is $25.25. I know that I'm expecting to sell 800 adult tickets, so I can put that here, but that's all I know. My goal here, after all in green, is how much should I charge per child, so I've highlighted that in green, and I don't know how many children are going to come. Could be 200, could be 300, could be 400, presumably it could be other numbers besides those. So how am I going to work with this? Well, first of all, let's go ahead and put those numbers in. A little cleaner now, it looks like this. Again, this is the price per adult times the number of adults, plus the price per child, something I don't know, times the number of children. I've just left a blank here because it could be 200, 300, 400, or as I said, could be some other number. 
Well, I do know this part. I know how much money I'm going to make from adults. So let's tally that up. It's $25.25 times 800. Or in other words, I'm going to make $20,200 from the adults. It would have been nice if this amount had exceeded or at least met my goal, because then I could have allowed the children to come in for free. That would have been um, good for both of us. For me, less math work to do. For them, free tickets. But at least I know how much I have to make from the children that come to the concert. So I move that 20200 over, subtract it off, and $4,800. That's how much I have to make from all of the children that attend. Let's clean this up a little bit. And here's what we have as a formula. The price per child times, well, this blank, how many children attend, is going to equal $4,800. Well, speaking of cleanup, let's not leave a blank. Let's call that number of children like we had at the very beginning. So now I can see how I can rearrange this. The price per child is going to be 4,800 divided by the number of children. And so if you pull out your calculator, you'll find if the number of children is 200, if 200 children attend, then it's going to cost 20, I should charge, I should say, $24 per child. That'll give me enough money that adults and children combined will make my goal. If it's 300 children, I can reduce the price, $16 per child. If this number down here is 400, then I can reduce it even further and I can charge only 12. Well, now that I've got this formula rewritten in the way that I have, I can test out even other scenarios. And that goes back to what I was saying before. If you're going to try a number of different values and see what the results are, if you're going to do some what-if analysis, then you might as well rearrange the equation first. So for example, let's say that every one of the 800 adults brought a child with them. So there were 800 children. Well, then I could charge only $6 per child. And if every adult brought two children, in other words, if there were 1,600 children, I'd only have to charge $3 per child. OK, that's the end of the lesson. Here's your homework. As you can see, I've cut and pasted this from a book, and I've skipped from 10 ahead to 13. I've left 17 and 18 out. In fact, those were ones that we already covered during the lesson today, and continue on through 22. Each of these three types of problems um, is important for you to be able to solve. And it's only 11 questions. You can either pause the video here and copy down the questions, or I will post these questions on my website. And you can print them out if you'd like to do it that way instead.